In this video, we will be installing the Flexco MMP Pre-Cleaner. Before starting the installation, we will confirm that we have all of our cleaner components, the mounting bolt kit, the IOM packet, and all the required tools. Then once the conveyor is physically locked and tagged out, we can begin the installation. When installing the MMP Pre-Cleaner, the first step will be to measure the total pulley diameter, including the lagging and the belt. To do so, we can measure our shaft diameter by transferring lines up to our pulley and then measuring between the lines. Here our shaft is two and one half inches. Now we need to measure from the shaft to the outermost surface of the belt. Here that measurement is nine and one half inches. We need to double that and add our shaft to get our total pulley diameter. We need to round this up and that's our total pulley diameter. Now we need to reference the installation manual to get our X, Y, and C coordinates. Here, the X is 11 and 1 half inches, the Y is 12 inches, and the C is 16 and 5 eighths. Now we need to transfer these over to lay out our pole location. Now we need to find the center of our shaft to use as a reference point. Here, we can trace down with our level lines that coincide with the side of the shaft and measure the distance between. Here, an inch and a quarter. From that center measurement, we're going to come over 11 and 1 half inch on our X dimension. We need to draw a plumb line here and this will be our X dimension. Now we need to measure down 12 inches from the center of our shaft or less 1 and a quarter half of the shaft, 10 and 3 quarter inches. Now, we'll draw a level line here, which will be our Y dimension. We can confirm with our C dimension, less half of the shaft equals 16 and 5 eighths. Now, using the template provided, we can trace out our bolt holes and the pole hole. We'll need to repeat the same process on the opposite side and then torch out the holes to proceed with the installation of our MMP. So now that we have our steel in place and we have our holes burned out for the pole and the bolts, we need to measure the structure width from side to side. Here we've got 50 inches. We need an additional six inches on each side, so the pole is going to need to extend at least 62 inches. Now we're ready to assemble the pole. To assemble the pole, we're going to need to make sure that our extender pole bolt holes line up with the holes in the center pole. One other thing to note is that the locking bolts that will go here and here, when in the service mode, should be away and down from the belt. 
We're going to slide our extender poles into the center pole. Lining up one of the holes in the center pole with the extender pole hole. We need to take a measurement to make sure that we're going to extend far enough for our plates. Here we've got 66 inches, so that should be good. Now we can start to assemble. Now we're going to install our locking bolts. First, putting on the lock nut. key to make sure that this nut doesn't bottom out before the bolt touches the pole. Now we can secure our lock nuts. And we're ready to install the pole. Now we'll be installing the pole. With the MMP pre-cleaner, our tensioner will come disassembled. This is what it looks like when it's assembled. So to assemble it, what you need to do is remove all the components from the pivot shaft. Install the torque arm. And then reinstall the components back onto the pivot shaft. set up for installation. Now that we have our pole installed and our hardware in place, we're ready to install our mounting plates and our QMT spring tensioner. This tensioner can be mounted in four different locations depending on space or access constraints. In this application, we're going to install it with our spring in the back for easy access and service. One thing to note is with our mounting plate, the key slot should always face the pulley when we're done with the installation. So here we're gonna go ahead and install our QMT and our mounting plate with our hardware. Now here we're going to want to move our mounting plate around so that our notches line up with the crosshairs we've drawn. Once we've done that, we can secure the fasteners. We're going to leave the other side loose for now so we can make sure our blade's going to hit flush across the pulley face. All right, now we're ready to install the blade onto the pole. The first thing we're going to do is loop our pin around the pole.
Now we can rotate the pole up. I'm going to slide the blade onto the pole. Reinsert the pin. Use the washer on the back side. And the keeper pin to secure it. Now we've got that, and hold the pole with a spud wrench. What we're gonna do here is make sure that we're hitting flush all the way across. One thing that's good to do is use the pole to rotate the blade. It can be deceiving when you push on the blade as the flex will take out that gap. Here, we've got a little bit of a gap over there. I'm gonna bump it out, okay. Now we're hitting flush across. He can tighten his side down over there. Once the offside mounting plate is secured, we can let the blade rotate down. Now, with some assistance from my partner and a spud wrench, we're gonna rotate the blade back up against the belt. We're gonna make sure that the blade is centered. About three inches here, okay. Now that the blade is centered, we're gonna lock our torque arm. And what we wanna do is run the nuts up so we have about an inch of thread above the top nut, pull our torque arm up against the spring, and use the set screws to lock it in place. And now that that's locked in place, he can let go of that side, the cleaner's stationary. Once we tighten our fasteners down here, we can go on to adjusting it. Now with the spring length label that's supplied in our IOM packet, we can refer to our blade width, which is 30 inches, and our spring collar, which is white. We need to adjust this to five and five eighths of an inch from the top of the torque arm to the top of this washer. Now that we've achieved five and five eighths of an inch from the top of our torque arm to the top of the washer, we'll lock our locking nut to secure it in place. It's always best practice to use two wrenches to lock this in place. Now we're set up and ready to go.